What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel and podcast, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. China has enjoyed an economic miracle from 1990 to 2020 that rivals any other country. Since the 1990s, the country's GDP has increased more than 40-fold, from $413 billion in 1990 to almost $20 trillion this year. The scale and speed at which China's economy has grown exceeds that of any other nation in all of human history. But that astronomical growth has taken a brutal turn since the onset of the COVID pandemic two years ago. COVID lockdowns, an ongoing real estate sector crisis, and most recently, a crippling heat wave and drought has brought the country virtually to its knees. In fact, this summer brought the worst heat wave ever recorded in the country, and according to some historians, is one of the worst heat waves ever recorded anywhere in the world. This has caused severe consequences on people's livelihoods, agriculture, and even heavy industry in China. Major companies like Toyota have had to shut down operations because the country's dams don't have enough water to generate electricity for the factories. The situation got so bad that the government had to take sweeping and draconian measures, including banning the use of air conditioners while temperatures rose above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. They even released microscopic particles into the atmosphere to try to reflect the sun's rays back into outer space and stimulate artificial rainfall in an attempt to relieve the heat and drought. So how did China find itself in such a disastrous situation, and what are they doing about it now? Before we dive in, make sure you've signed up for our daily newsletter at wallstreetmillennial.com newsletter. It's delivered straight to your email inbox at 5am every morning of the trading week, and has everything you need to know before taking on the day. The top 2-5 to five stories in the markets each day, expertly analyzed and distilled into a short 3 minute read, so you know the things that matter most for your money. In just a few minutes a day, you can prepare yourself with all the market due diligence that we perform for you. And the best part is, it's completely free. Click the link in the description below or go to wallstreetmillennial.com newsletter to put your email on the mailing list and start receiving the newsletter today. China's heat wave started in June and stretched for three months through the end of August of this year. It immediately started breaking heat records, with June being the hottest on record going back 60 years. But it wasn't until July and August before things really started getting desperate. The record heat, combined with a weeks-long period of no rain at all in certain areas, led to severe drought that has forced emergency measures. Take a listen to this report from the BBC. In China, authorities are battling one of the worst droughts seen in more than 50 years. Falling river levels have left hydroelectric power stations unable to produce enough energy. As a result, emergency measures to save electricity have come into effect. Shopping centres have been ordered to close early, factories have temporarily shut down and the lights on Shanghai's famous waterfront are to be turned off. Catherine de Costa reports. In the province of Sichuan, 80% of the area's electricity is usually supplied by hydroelectric power. But the drought has caused the supply of hydroelectric power to dip down as low as 50% of its normal levels. Factories supplying global companies including Apple, Toyota, Tesla, and others have been forced to shut down because there simply isn't enough electricity from the hydroelectric dams. Even Shanghai, China's industrial and financial heart, has been subjected to electricity shortages and rationing. The city's iconic riverfront had all of its lights shut off to save energy. With China being very conscious about its outward-facing image, doing something so visible to the glory of its economic heart shows how desperate the situation became. The reduction in electricity supply was exacerbated by soaring use of air conditioning due to the historic heat. Temperatures reached as high as 113 degrees Fahrenheit in the Bay Bay district. The extreme heat and drought has also decimated China's agriculture. In certain areas, crop yields have been reported at less than one-third of normal levels. Livestock has also been dying due to the extreme heat, including chickens owned by this chicken farmer. Needless to say, this summer's historic heat wave and drought have been devastating to countless Chinese communities. And climate scientists and Chinese officials alike say to only expect even more extreme summers in the coming years. So how did China's energy infrastructure end up in this situation? To answer that, we have to understand the country's past 40-year history, specifically their rapid economic growth and the resulting energy infrastructure. Beginning in 1978, China's economy started to explode. After opening up to trade with the rest of the world, the country has averaged 10% GDP growth per year over more than 40 years. That rate of growth is usually almost impossible to sustain for as long as China has. The U.S., for comparison, has averaged around 2-3% annual growth in the last 10-20 to years. 
But with China's growth also came the need for huge amounts of energy. It's incredibly difficult to make major structural changes to a country's energy infrastructure at a pace that fast. Power plants take time to build, transmission lines have to be upgraded to carry huge amounts of power thousands of miles, and substations have maximum capacities that can't be exceeded even if the power is available. So the country turned to coal, one of the cheapest and easiest sources of energy to set up in a short amount of time. According to a report out of the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory in Berkeley, California, China's coal consumption quadrupled just from 1970 to 1990. Coal worked great for China in the 1900s when it was still a relatively small economy. But as more and more coal factories were built near ever-growing cities, the cost of air pollution from them became ridiculously bad. According to studies from researchers from UC Berkeley, the Rand Corporation, and the University of Chicago, air pollution accounts for almost a fifth of all deaths in China and costs over half a trillion dollars of GDP in lost productivity each year. Chinese President Xi Jinping has said it is a national priority to solve the pollution crisis in China, and renewable energy is a key part of that solution. China has increasingly turned to renewables to fuel more and more of their economy. By 2020, China generated almost 20% of its energy from primary sources like wind, solar, and hydroelectric. In some parts of the country, like Hubei province, hydroelectric power provides the majority of the electricity supply. The Three Gorges Dam, for example, sits on the Yangtze River and produces more electricity than any other power station of any kind in the entire world. While hydroelectric power is far more reliable than other renewables like solar and wind, when a historic drought hits, even dams can be affected by the severe enough weather. To deal with the decreased production from the dams, China brought back online some of its old coal-fired power plants. In Sichuan province, one of the worst afflicted regions, they had to operate their biggest coal power plant at full capacity for weeks on end. Short-term coal consumption in China has surged 15% above normal levels just to fuel the power plants. And the Chinese vice premier has said that the Chinese government will support more coal power going forward in order to promote power stability. But bringing more coal-fired power plants online is a medium to long-term solution. In the short term, China's economy was suffering, their agriculture was getting destroyed, and their image was also getting tarnished. So officials turned to something rarely talked about, geoengineering. They fired rockets into the air that released microscopic silver iodide molecules in order to create clouds and stimulate artificial rainfall. The idea is that the water vapor in the atmosphere condenses on the microscopic particles to form water droplets, eventually forming clouds and rain. Cloud seeding and artificial rain are not new, and have been especially used by China over the past couple decades. They use artificial rain in the days before the 2008 Beijing Olympics in order to try to reduce the chances of rain during the actual games. They have also used artificial rainfall before national celebrations in order to reduce the level of air pollution. But cloud seeding also has negative long-term effects. Silver iodide is one of the most common seeding substances used in cloud seeding and is toxic to humans and animals. It can cause a sickness called argyria, which can cause the skin to turn dark blue or gray. To combat future adverse weather events like this disastrous summer, China is already planning to spend billions of dollars to build new water infrastructure. The Ministry of Water Resources has already approved dozens of major projects worth a total of a quarter trillion dollars. These projects include water storage facilities, as well as ways to control where rivers flow. The idea is to be able to divert water from places where there is too much water, like in the Tibetan highlands during spring's melt, to places where there is drought. However, many experts say that trying to pursue such a large-scale engineering solution to extreme weather events is costly, disruptive to local ecosystems, and unlikely to work against unpredictable weather. And besides the extreme weather from this summer, China is also dealing with other, even more serious economic and public health challenges. Major cities continue to be locked down due to the government's ongoing zero-COVID policies. Combined with the ongoing real estate developer meltdown, China's economy has turned from growth to decline in recent quarters. In the second quarter of 2022, China's economy contracted by 2.6%. Economic activity is still significantly below normal levels due to COVID lockdown-related disruptions and more recently the energy shortage caused by the droughts. To try to ease the strain, China's state council announced a multi-hundred billion dollar stimulus plan and cut interest rates multiple times. The stimulus mainly provides funding for large infrastructure projects, with tens of billions of dollars earmarked to projects towards ensuring stable energy supplies. 
In the grand scheme of things, China's economy is still one of the strongest in the world, especially considering that nearly all other major economies are also facing challenges from inflation and supply chain. One summer of heat and drought won't derail the Chinese bull run on its own. But the pain endured by the Chinese people and businesses this summer shows that even the biggest economic powerhouses aren't invincible. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about China's historic heat wave and drought? Do you think they should have been so reliant on hydroelectric power? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to sign up for our daily business and finance email newsletter at wallstreetmillennial.com newsletter. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.